Okay, so if you look at this, this is, this is from base R, stack package. Then if you look at this, uh, what we are looking at is uh, this, the top comment. Okay, so it has one, two, three, four, four argument. Okay, so S and Y, which is our variable, two variable. And then use means, so you can, you can uh, drag a scroll down and read, you can read this. So the argument used, how can we use this? We can put an optional character, okay, which is uh, here. Uh, by default, it remove everything, basically. So in our case, it should remove everything, but there is an error. Okay, so here, um, wait a minute. So we, you, if you, if you are interested, you can use, uh, you can read this paragraph. Okay, uh, what is the condition to use for different, uh, different situation to remove the missing value? So, for example, here, if use is complete dot obs, the missing value are handled up by case wise deletion. Uh, which means that, okay, and there is no complete cases that give you an error. So which means that uh, it will give you, it, it will remove every, it will remove the whole observation if one is missing, okay? Something like that. So you, so I think here, uh, one of the most important thing is that you read the documentation, okay? So if you look at, say, the mean, which is, which is the base R function to calculate the arithmetic mean, there is an any dot IM, IM, IM argument. Because it is, uh, uh, this package is developed by someone, okay? And if you go back, Correlation is from another package, which is developed by some other people. So there are a little bit uh, difference in naming the argument. So that's why you need to read it. Uh, because uh, again, why R is so difficult in the first place? Because it's really f flexible. And if you, if you, if you visit the, uh, the R official website, you can see that there are a lot of R packages available for you uh, for in in many fields, medicine, uh, biochemis uh, biochemistry, bioinformatics, uh, genetics, any fields. Um, are there there are many packages that can do uh, that, that can do a, a procedure function. So that's why you need to read it because even so, uh, for example, uh, if you know R really well, then you can write a function mean to, to replace the mean by yourself. Okay, so like MSTAT, there are other statistical packages or epidemiological, I mean, packages for epidemiological calculation. Uh, so you can use, you can use such packages, but you have to read the, the documentation, okay? Which is basically this one, okay? The health fund. And see how, how they documented and what kind of options you can use. Okay, so the reason why we are giving uh, why we are giving the argument uh, use instead of any dot IM is uh, people. I mean, the people who develop the packages are different, so that's why they have a they have different ways of naming uh, certain things. Okay. Uh, any questions?
Thank you, Mio. I think don't worry about that uh, too much now uh, because uh, right now I think you just remember how, okay, if you want to do descriptive statistics, then you do this. Okay, if you want to do correlation, you do this. And then there are certain conditions that doesn't work. And then uh, you consult with other people or with me or you Google it. So it will come easily. Okay, so if there is no further questions, then we will move to this, uh, to this discussion. Okay, what, what we are going to discuss today is uh, visualization. Okay, initially we talk about uh, statistics with R. But visualization is a part, it's a part of statistics. And starting this point, we no longer use uh, MSTEP package, okay? So, because currently um, I'm trying to develop uh, the fun uh, these functions to generate uh, visualization. Uh, but right now, uh, we were trying we are trying to use base R to generate uh, uh, graphs, uh, histograms, other graphs, okay? So I think we have already used uh, a few times this special function called width. But we will talk again uh, today. Okay, so what kind of visualization do we have in store? So first, uh, we want to look at numerical variable, okay? One numerical variable. Say here, we have H. So we want to look at the histogram of H. Basically, this is the distribution, okay? So what is the difference between these two uh, picture, these two graph? So the first one, the first one is uh, without removing, if you remember, okay, we have maximum value of age more than 300, okay? So this is how it looks. Uh, if, we, if you don't remove uh, the missing value, okay? So if you see here, this is very extreme value. So it's pulling the, the mean uh, towards the extreme value. So the mean is around here, but the max, the, the median is around here, okay? So that's why it, on the second picture, on the right side, we remove, replace an A uh, with an A if H is more than 100. And then we generate this histogram. okay? So the, the two pictures are drastically different. Okay, here is right skew, very screw distribution because of one single value. Here we have a nearly normal distribution. Okay, it looks very normal. So that, that means that we need to look at uh, every other extreme values. Okay, so this is how you summarize uh, how to visualize if you have numerical data. But again, this is not the only way to visualize this, okay? So there, there are other uh, plots like uh, you, can, you can plot the density and see the density. Uh, we call it a Carnet density plot, okay? Or line plot, whatever you call it. And we can see the uh, area under the curve uh, using that density plot. So what I'm trying to say is, this is not the only way to visualize numerical data, uh, but, uh, but for the sake of simplicity, okay, I'm not going to you know flood your flood you with all these uh, techniques and skill. I just want to focus how to how to check our distribution whether it's uh, normal or not. Okay, so how do you check this uh, graph is normal? On, uh, how to check this data is normal or not? We can check with histogram. Okay, so if you look at the right, uh, the left side, it is not normal because the data are uh, you know crumbed uh, on the left side and only one single value on the left on the right side. 
So the distribution is, so the till, its till is on the right side. So it's right screw distribution. And now on the right side, when we remove this extreme value, it becomes approximately normal uh, with the median around this, this one. Okay. Okay, next. Uh, that is when we have, don't worry about the, the, the function, okay? We will talk this function uh, when, when we talk about our lab in a few, in a few moments. So right now, look at the picture. These are called the bar block, okay? Bar chat or whatever you call it, okay? Okay, so I, I have a question here. So if you just uh, I look at this picture and then go back and look at this picture, what is the difference between this histogram and the bar chat? I want somebody to answer. Please, somebody. What is the difference Gap. between histogram and bar chart? The gaps between the, what is that? Male and female? Yeah, you, you're absolutely right, right? right? So the, the exit, exit is different, okay? So uh, on bar chart, there is, a, there is a gap because it's not continuous, okay? And on the, so this is continuous, that's why the graph, uh, the, the, there is no space or gap uh, between the between bars. Okay, anyway, anyway, we, we, we can talk uh, in details when we talk, you know, when we um, write in R, functions in R. Okay, so this is how you summarize the bar plot. I think uh, a lot of people, um, I think they, you already have uh, this sort of uh, this sort of uh, this sort of graphs in your mathematics, right? When when you are young, like high school or secondary school. Okay. Anyway, so the first plot we have the the invalid value twelve point two. Okay. So anyway, that is not that different. So. We have three categories in the first picture, and then in the second picture, I removed 12.2, which is invalid value. Okay, so this is our graph now. So if you look at this, uh, our comparison between me and female, so we have more female in our data set. Okay, so this is how you um, uh, visualize uh, your categorical data using bar plot. And again, there is not only the only way to uh, uh, make visualization for categorical there. Okay, next. Uh, next is we want to uh, look at two categorical data, okay? Uh, which is basically our sex and married, okay? Sex is uh, categorical, married is also categorical. Okay, so on the right side, I mean, uh, how do you say this? Okay, on, on this left side, we, this is, okay, on the row, this is married, okay? On the column, this is sex. So I think this is a nice graph. Uh, this is called mosaic plot, okay? This is called mosaic plot. It, it gives you the category as well as the size of the, the size of the category. So as you can see that uh, the largest area is where the female and the married, yes, intersect, okay? So it means that the biggest proportion is those who are female and already married, okay? So the, as you can see that this area is bigger than this area, okay? even though, um, because this one is a little bit narrow, a little bit small, is hot, is, okay, its width is a little bit small. Uh, height is nearly, I mean, there is a gap, but almost there. So compared to May, female have 
female who are already married has the uh, has has larger proportion. Okay, so next, uh, next, this one is a little bit uh, tricky. Okay, so this is three categorical variable. Okay, uh, I I just want to say that you can do I mean crazy things in software. Okay. You can do crazy thing in software, which means that you should do it, which doesn't mean that you should do it. So that's why we, you can do this, but it's a little bit different, uh, difficult to interpret, right? Okay, so what we have here, we have sex, family history, and smoking history. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, so here on this side is family history. Okay, now on this side, uh, if you look at the column, big column, we have two big column, okay? So the larger column is for female and the little bit smaller, relatively smaller one is male. So on, under the female, we look at the uh, smoking, smoking history, okay? So consider, consider this, female and male as a strata, okay? So we have two strata, and then and at each strata, we look at smoking history, and then cross tabulate with uh, family history. So this is a kind of, you know, something like, something called uh, mental hands method to control for confounding. So again, uh, when you have two variable, okay? Explanatory variable and response variable, and then you want to, uh, you want to stratify this uh, relationship by another variable. We want to assess for confounding effect. Okay, so you can plot this. So if you look at this and a female, okay, you, you can generally have an idea. Female group is larger than me. Okay, so and a female, we cross tabulate between family history and smoking history. Okay, so here is a little bit uh, uh, tricky, but I think uh, this side is minus 99. Uh, okay, this one, this one is minus 99, okay? This line is minus 99, this one is current, former, and ever, okay? So the uh, labor a uh, little bit, you know, cluster, so cannot read it, but again, minus 99, current, former, ever. So the biggest one is an of uh, an female group. Uh, family history know those who never smoke have no family history, and those who uh, never smoke, uh, those who never smoke, has a smaller size of uh, smaller size uh, saying yes to family history. So compared to no and yes. Uh, there is a, uh, there seems to be a relationship uh, and a female, okay? So if you look at Anna May, also the same, okay? Those who never smoke and uh, those no family history no is the largest one. And those who say, uh, those who never smoke, or we can say that those who uh, former smoke say yes to family history. So there seem to be some pattern of association. But I think this uh, graph is a little bit confusing if you are not used to looking at this kind of graph, okay? But anyway, uh, we call this kind of graph as music plot, okay? Okay, so again, uh, we talk about one categorical uh, visualization of one categorical variable and visualization of two categorical variable. And we talk about visualization of numerical variable with histogram. So here I want to look at, uh, I want to, what is being presented here is on the left side, we, uh, uh, we take all the observation all may observation for may and then do a histogram 
And then on the right side, we take all female and then did a histogram. Okay, so this is how you, you can compare the two histograms between male and female. So the histogram can be said, is, I mean, if you look at the tallest bar, it's around 50 and 55, okay? And also again, the tallest bar is around 50 and 55. So, and the distribution seems to be, uh, so if you look at, if you read the, the lowest and largest one here, 32, 70. This one is 35 to 65. So female has, I, uh, female has a little bit uh, older, five years, uh, okay, start from 35 and a little bit younger, 65. And this one is 32 to 70. But the median and shape are nearly the same, okay? Quite similar to the, uh, to, in both category. So I think this is how you, uh, how you can group summary, okay? We call this group summary. Um, we summarize age and group by sex, male and female. Okay, next we will quickly go through it. And this is correlation, okay? So as you, uh, if you remember, this is a correlation between test one and test two. Okay, that's one and test two. And we didn't remove any uh, invalid value. That's why you can see that, uh, uh, so test one is interleukin six and test two is CRP, uh, c reactive protein. And we have uh, negative values, okay? So, and if you just look at this, uh, this data set, the correlation is 0 0.39. So which means that positive correlation and points, 39, which is 0.4, okay, 0.4, is relatively, you know, moderate association, okay, we can say that it is, this shows moderate positive association between test one and test two, which means that, okay, if test one increase, okay, if the test one increase one unit, then test two increase 0 0.5, 0 0.4 unit, okay, so this is how you interpret it. And then again, uh, on, a, on this side, uh, we have we remove the uh, remove, remove the invalid value. Okay, the time is almost up, so I, uh, I think we will continue after uh, I restart the meeting. Okay. Okay, so I uh, let's just go back to this plot. So this correlation and in correlation we have uh, okay correlation uh, which is the magnitude okay to uh, which is the which is a value. Uh, indicating the association between two numeric care variables and correlation. Okay, this is called uh, Pearson correlation coefficient. Okay, uh, we just you know call it correlation uh, because it's easy. Correlation coefficient. Okay, this is called Pearson's correlation coefficient, and this value are. Uh, range from minus one to plus one. Okay, so what does minus one mean? Okay, so minus one mean that it is the perfect negative correlation. Okay, what does it mean? In our example, we have test one and test two. Let's say we have negative one as a uh, correlation between test one and test two, which basically means that if test one increase one unit, okay, test one increase one unit, test two will decrease 
one unit. That is the inverse relationship, okay? Perfect inverse relationship. Okay, so negative mean if one goes up, another goes down. Okay, what is positive correlation? It is uh, the same, okay, the same and positive correlation. Okay, so in our case, in our example, it is just uh, means that if that's one increase, that's two will also increase. Okay, if that's one increase by one unit, that's two will also increase by one unit. Okay, so both increase in this case. So this is perfect positive correlation. And what if it is zero? Okay, if it is zero, then it is called uh, no correlation or no association. Okay, so what about point two or minus point two? It is around point two or two point five three. It is a weak association. Okay, which is weak. And around point five is like moderate. You can say moderate association. And then around point 0.8, uh, strong association, okay? 0 0.8, uh, which indicate both, both, okay? Minus 0 0.8 or minus 0 0.5. So this is how you interpret the correlation. So again, if you look at this, uh, so this value, R is 0 0.39, which is around, uh, which is a little bit, uh, a moderate association and it is positive so it is you know one increase if one increase and another one increase too it is positive association but you have to look at the graph itself okay there are missing value like this data the this group is very cluster very close together and this one are you know scattered around so which is not good Okay, which is not good. Uh, these are extreme values, so whatever association it is, it is biased. Okay, so that's why we remove these invalid uh, points, which is minus nine, minus uh, 99. And when, you, when we remove it, okay, when we remove the, uh, wait a minute, okay, when we remove the, invalid value, okay, we can draw a straight line, okay, just to look at this one, okay. It means that there is a, you know, one increase, the other also increase. But how strong is it, okay? Okay, one increase, another one, one increase. Or if one increase, another one decrease. Did this, indicate, did this indicate in the duration, okay? which direction the relationship goes. Okay, that is one point. Another point is, uh, uh, okay, what is the highlight? Okay, another point is this one, okay? How scatter your data around this line? So you can see that it's like, you know, completely all over the graph. It's scattered around uh, and not, you know, uh, cluster on this line. So it means that the relationship is not that strong. So we just almost close to zero, right? Almost close to zero. So for the sake of illustration, we just put a straight line up, but it is not the straight line. It is something like around this line, okay? Something like that. Well, but we will talk about this, uh, this, this kind of graph in linear regression, okay? So just remember, our first point is, it indicates the duration. Second, it indicates the, um, magnitude of the relationship. Okay. 
need to. Okay, so basically it indicates duration and what is, uh, okay, how strong is the relationship? But you cannot exactly quantify the relationship, okay? You can say how large it is, okay? On a scale of minus one to plus one. But you cannot say what is the number exactly. So that's why you need linear regression uh, to quantify the relationship. Because this, these concepts were carried over to linear regression. And then when you're trying to look at the linear regression, uh, we will also use this uh, correlation again. Okay, so uh, remember correlation start from minus one on a scale of minus one to plus one. Okay, if it is zero, then there is no association. If it is minus one, a perfect negative association, plus one, perfect positive association. Okay, uh, so this is, uh, this is correlation and this is assessing between two categorical, uh, sorry, two numerical variable. And this plot is called scatter plot. Okay, uh, if you already, you know, if you already work with data, then you, you probably, uh, you probably do this kind of graph. Scatter plot. Okay, I think uh, so. I think this is the end of the uh, presentation. Do you have any questions related to that presentation? If not, we will move to uh, our studio. Okay, so. Why don't you go to the, uh, we have a folder and a drive C, okay? And then, wait a minute. Uh, Okay, uh, again, uh, the same thing, right? So you should have this day five, uh, day five R script. And then we will copy this, okay? And same as the other day, and then we will paste it, and rename it with uh, day six, okay? I'm going to increase the font size a little bit. Okay, so today we are going to, you know, uh, create this graph, histogram, scatter plot, uh, bar plot. Okay, so I I I suggest you. Okay, what happened here? I suggest re you remove everything starting. Uh, I mean after after you after you read your data set okay delete it again everything because we're just going to create graph so we don't need to uh we don't need to save we don't need to use that patient to data set anymore so just delete it okay and then run this okay so control shift and uh, Okay, we have our data set. Yes? I think uh, your screen has fr frozen, so we are not able to see your screen. Oh, okay. Can you see it now? Okay, now it's good. Okay, so delete everything and uh, after you read your data set and then run the whole script, whole R script uh, using control shift and that. Okay, now let's create histogram. Okay. And we 
create histogram for age. Okay. And because when you when we create a graph or plot, what uh, here we call we call these graph as plots. Okay. So this these plots will appear here. Okay. So you need to make it a little bit bigger so that uh, the blocks will appear. Okay, let's um, let's use the new function uh, which I have shown this earlier. Okay, the name of the function is width. So we can use this function to 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 indicate our data set. Okay, so. Always remember this uh, with a round bracket and then you put your data set. Okay. Uh, this is not M stack. The histogram command is not, uh, there is no histogram command in M stack. Okay. So that's why you, you need to uh, indicate the data set using this function. So we indicate our data set patient. And okay, now uh, after this comma, we can we can uh, use our histogram comment. Okay, the function name is hist h i s t hist. Okay, uh, it's a short term for um, histogram. And then we put h. That's it. That's it for histogram. So you run this. And then you, uh, there's the same graph appear, okay? Same graph appear. So what if we, you know, make it a little bit uh, smaller so that you run this again, and that is an error, you see? So that's why you need to make your, uh, you need to make enough space, okay? You need to make space enough for the graph to appear. Just drag it upward. Okay, so this is how you uh, create your histogram. And then here, there is a button called zoom, okay? When you click it, uh, you can zoom your graph or your plot, whatever you call it. Because sometimes uh, the graph we create a uh, sometimes complicated, like we did uh, with three categorical variables. Okay, it's complicated, it's, you know, cranky, it's all messed up. So you need to use the whole screen to look at the graph. Uh, in that case, zoom is a, uh, zoom is a handy, uh, handy button. Okay, anyway, just look at this, uh, uh, this histogram, okay? And as we have discussed it, this, uh, the, Almost all data are clustered around here, less than 100. And then there is a value above 100, okay? So we need to remove that invalid value. Invalid value. So right now, I'm going to use a piping function, okay? Okay, we, we we put patient data set into the piping function and then we move to the next line. What do we do? We remove if the age is more than 100, okay? We already covered this one. So how do we remove it or replace it? We use the comment, the function replace. Okay, we use the piping function. So there is, uh, you don't need to specify data set. You just move to the, you just give it variable name. We replace it with any value. What is the condition if h is greater than 100? Okay, at this stage when we run this, uh, we get our data set. Okay, but we don't want to look at the data set, we want to look at the graph. Okay, so next line. Okay, next line. So we put to another pipe. Okay, we push this data set to another pipe and then go to the next line and we use the same command okay but here notice the chain 
We use the same one, but we have to indicate data set with dot. dot. So you don't put patient, you put dot. Okay. <clears throat> So there is a there, there is a concept uh, principle behind this uh, piping one, piping function, but just remember every time uh, that data set is being pushed forward, it pu it is pushed forward as a dot uh, and dot indicate the data set. Okay, dot is the name of the data set that is pushed along the piping. Okay, that's why we we cannot call the patient data set here. Okay, otherwise we will, we will get the original one, not the modifying, uh, modifying with this H any value. Okay, so we ran this, and then you can notice that the histogram will change, okay? So you can see that histogram becomes almost normal. Okay, so this is how you um, uh, how you create histogram in in R. So this is data exploration. So uh, we didn't manage data. We just directly uh, call from the patient data set and uh, trying to replace the value along the way. Okay, we didn't make any changes to the original data set. Okay, any questions? <clears throat> if not, then we, we will move to the uh, group summary. Okay. okay, we can say that group summary or histogram. Okay, uh, what do we... Summarize age with uh, age with sex. Okay. okay, again, here we need to do two things, okay? Because we are directly calling from the patient data set, this replace is not uh, modifying in the original data set. So every time we uh, call this patient data set, we need to modify age, okay? First, we need to modify age. We need to replace age value, age and value value. Okay, this is the first one. Second one, we need to, uh, we need to just take all may value, okay? How do we do this? We will use a new function called filter, okay? Like in Microsoft Excel, okay? If you are familiar with Excel, you can filter uh, using column, okay? Uh, the same principle here, you can filter your data set by some variable. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, so this one is the same, okay? You can type or you can copy paste uh, from the previous, I mean, from this one, okay? I'm going to type it, so you can just, you know, uh, you can watch this a little bit slow. H greater than 100, okay? This is, uh, this is replacing H. Second, what do we do? We take all may value, okay? So we will use filter. Okay, just like any, uh, so this filter come from MSTEP, okay, MSTEP package. So any MSTEP function, you have to put data set, but when we use piping, we don't need to specify it, okay? It is automatically uh, push the data set. Okay, if you want to put it, you can put dot instead of the, uh, the instead of the patient. So you can specify the data set name with dot, but never mind. Just you know, forget it. So you can just filter. Okay, what do we, what do we want? We want male value. Okay, if sex is equal to male, so we say sex is equal to male. Okay. 
and you can just you know you can just check this uh, you can just check this by running this command line okay so you can see here that uh, okay this one is root observation uh, number of observation this is number of variable okay so number of variable does not change because because we didn't make any changes to the variable we want we just filter the observation so the observation is no longer 120 it is 145 okay so again at this point what you can do is you can to make sure that you got the correct data set you can tabulate sets okay So you see in our data set at this moment at this line we don't have female anymore okay so that is how you um, check whether you got the correct uh, data set or not okay now the same line okay the same line so just you know type it or copy paste it and then there is no end stack so uh, you we have to replace it with the dot then use histogram h okay the same comment the same function so let's run this and see uh, how the histogram changes okay so the shape of the histogram does not change but when you look at the frequency it changes a little bit okay okay so so you can see that this frequency number drop and this is for mail okay we want to next we want to get female so why don't you just copy it and then paste it okay <laughs> just copy paste and then change this to female then you can you get the uh, histogram for female Okay, can you follow? Okay, so I think, let's go back to this comment, okay? Uh, so if you look back, so here you can, uh, you can browse all the graph that you created, okay? Every graph is labeled as histogram of age right it's a little bit confusing which uh, which is which we're not sure so we need to make some change okay we 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 make we change the title okay how do we change the title we have we give argument okay more argument to the function so give it a comma and then press tab key so you can see that there are a lot of uh uh, uh, there are several arguments okay there are several arguments there the one we want is main which is the main title okay so main title is it and lever so you click this then change this for uh okay how do we change this this program of h by Okay, so why don't we copy this line and then we select it line and replace it, okay? Paste it. So we can change this to main. Okay, so when you run it again, this histogram will appear histogram of age by May, and next line, histogram of uh, age by female. So this is how you change your uh title of the instrument so you can when you browse it you you can easily identify which which uh which data set you are using okay so what is this call okay filter we just want to take all female value or we we just want to take all male value what is this call 
This one is called subset in your data. Okay, subset in data set. Okay, I think in mathematics, uh, I think around probability, um, maybe you have a terminology called set, set theory or something. Okay, so this, this is the same. So data matrix is considered as a set. And then when you take all the male value or when you take all the female value, it is considered as a subset, okay? So that is called subsetting the data set. Okay, so the same goes here. So copy and paste it. Okay, so this is how you create histogram for one variable and for, you know, uh, group summary group by categorical variable. So do you get it? Any questions at this point? And any questions? No. Uh, doctor, just one. Uh, yes. If, if you want to change the uh, the levels of the x-axis, like the age to age of the male, something like that, is there a command for that as well? Uh, age for male. Yeah. Do you mean that? Yes. Yes. Exactly. That the uh, the x line down there, the levels of the x-axis. Or you want to, oh, okay, so you want to adjust the level or age. Uh, Is that what you mean? Can you repeat that again? Sorry. I... Yes, uh, like uh, the, the one which, which we change right now with the using command, uh, uh, the command, uh, what was that? The main, the main command, it changed the title of the main title. Okay, okay. If so, the title of the x-axis. From age yeah. to age of the main. Yes, of course we have it. Okay, so first main is not a comment. Main is an argument. Okay, so histogram right. is a comment, or we call it a function. Okay, so I, I think uh, main is argument. Uh, just stick to that. So when you change the label of x exit, you can do this. Okay, by a slab. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, which is the x level or level level x exit? Okay, level or x exit, and then you can say that uh, okay, h in years. Okay, h in years exactly. And next we do this for say, and we run this again. Okay, uh, is that what you mean? Yes, exactly. Okay, okay, okay that's great. Yeah. Uh, any questions? If not, I, I'm going to show you a trick, okay? Uh, as of now, what we, what we have to do is uh, we, want, we have to go back, you know, not good, right? If we want to compare, we have to go back and forward, which is not good. So what we want to do is we want to uh, combine the graph, combine these two histograms in one graph. Okay, so okay, just let me, uh, okay, just let me clear this. Okay, clear this. Okay, you just, you know, uh, sweep everything. Okay, and then I'm going to draw. So let's think of this as a canvas or, or your A4 paper, okay, this plan. So what do you want to do? You want to combine two histogram, okay? So histogram is a little bit, you know, long. It is. The, the the width is long okay so you have two so basically you divide your histogram into two half okay let's let's do this with the straight line okay so consider is uh, consider this as a box okay consider this as a box we want to create 
two rows, okay? We want to create two rows and one column. Do you get my point? Consider as a A4 and then uh, consider as a box and then use uh, split this box half. So which basically means that we have two rows. Okay. And then you have two, uh, where is it? Okay, you have two rows and you have one column. You got it? Okay, so how do we do this? How do we combine this? First, okay, first, you need to, you need to tell R, R or R Studio that we are going to split this canvas off. We are going to split this paper into half, okay? With two rows and one column, okay? Um, how do we do this? We do it, um, so just remember this, okay? Uh, we change the canvas, the graph canvas, so this is blank canvas, into two rows and one column. Okay. So how do we say this? We say par, which is a parameter for graph, okay? And then I'm throw. Uh, okay, and uh, it is a matrix, uh, something row and column, okay? So we say, always say observation first, okay? So we, uh, sorry, we always say row first. So row and column, okay? Remember this order, row and column. So we combine this value, okay? Row to two rows and one column, okay? So if you don't remember what it means, just remember par and then you put bracket and the and from is equal, uh, you, you put to this value together with C, okay, concatenate. And then you specify the row, there are two rows and there are one rows, okay? So when you run this, nothing change, okay? No error, nothing change. Okay, so after this, we need to run this again, okay? So you just copy this and then you just paste it, okay? So you have to look at the order, okay? The order is we need to set the parameter of the graph first, and then you, you run the graph, okay? Wait. Okay, so I'm going to remove the, uh, remove this. Wait, wait. Okay, so as you can see this, it's a little bit bigger, right? But anyway, we can compare it side by side, or top and, top, top and button, whatever you call it. Okay, so this is how you do this in R. Okay, anyway, you can zoom it. So I think I need to share. Anyway, this is the same one, okay? So you can see that uh, the distribution is almost uh, looks the same, right? Almost the same. Okay, so let's go back to our studio. So do you get this? I think perhaps, I think we can, we can uh, do this with the, Okay, let me quickly do this uh, with the test, okay? Uh, not age, with test. Test one. So we are going to replace test one. Uh, we have uh, invalid value, right? If you remember the other day. Okay, so we uh, find this uh, invalid value and replace with any, and then we uh, subset with uh, may. We take all the me and then take the histogram or test one. Okay, what is the test one? It is the interleukin six, okay, IL six. Okay, this, let's run, uh, okay. Let's run this two, okay? You need to run everything together, 
otherwise it won't work okay so this is interleukin 6 by me that we need female so just copy this and then paste this and then just put female okay i think this also doesn't look changed uh, doesn't look them uh, much difference okay okay i think why don't why don't we change this to bmi yeah i have a poor choice so we replace this okay okay how do we replace this control d okay just press control d so you remove the replace one because in, uh, we don't need to change BMI, okay? Anything in BMI, I guess. So you just, you know, replace with BMI and with BMI, okay? With BMI and with BMI. I think uh, what I want to show is I want to show you the the, the difference in distribution if we categorize by me and me, okay? Okay, I don't know. Does it look that different? Yeah, a little bit different, right? Anyway, this one is something like that. And this one is a little bit uh, larger, right? Okay, anyway. Okay, so this is how you do this, uh, how, you, how you do this program in R. So I think uh, time is almost up. So do you have any questions? Can we uh, separate the canvas uh, according to column? Like we want two column and one row. Can we do it? Uh, can you repeat again? You want to separate two, two columns? Like uh, not uh, not comparing up and down. Can we compare it by side by side? Like two histograms. Yeah, yeah. You change this value by uh, so you want to side by side. So just change this into one and two. Okay, you want one row and two column. That's it. Okay, so I think time is almost up, and I will restart the meeting. If you want to look at this example, otherwise you can, you know. Okay, so the question is, uh, did this comparing uh, up and down, okay, top and bottom? So the question is, we want to compare side and side, okay? So I, I think just try to take a moment here and think. I think the same principle, okay? So consider it's a blank compact, so you, we have a E4 sheet, let's say E4 sheet. And then what do we want is, we don't want this, uh, we don't want to split it uh, horizontally. We want to split it vertically, okay, side by side. Okay, that's it. We only have two figures, okay? If you have more figures, then you can do just, you know, many, many figures as much as you want. And then you count the row and column, okay? But right now, we only have, okay. Uh, why don't we do this? We run everything, okay? Because right now we have six histogram, right? For two histogram for H, two histogram for test one, and two histogram for BMI. So why don't we do this? We, we want to compare side by side of H, side by side of BMI, side by side of test one. Okay? So how many how many rows? One, two, three. How many column we have? two columns okay so let's uh i think it's a little bit com uh, it's a little bit uh, uh crowded here so what i want to do is i want to give it as um wait okay 
what I want to do is I want to give it a heading, okay? How to give it a heading? Uh, control Shift R. Okay, so you cannot see it, but when you press it, uh, when you press it, there is a, can you see this insert session uh, prompt box? Can you see this box appearing? Yes. Okay, so this is a section label, okay? So you can set, you can give it a section label, uh, which is we we want to plot, okay, okay, histogram uh, combine for uh, age that's one and BMI, okay. So this is called a section heading. So when you click OK. You can see there's a little bit different, uh, there is a comment, but a little bit different one. So uh, what changes we, we made, right? So you can look at here. You can, you, you have the heading, uh, which we call outline, okay? Outline of the R script. Say so you, when you have 500 lines of, lines of code or thousand lines of code and you do not have any heading it's very difficult to scroll down and move up and down okay so when you split it into section and you can just do this okay uh okay so i'm going back a little bit upward okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give it a heading okay our setup so this is a setup. Uh, this is a setup, and then uh, we go down here, around here, and then put another session, Control Shift R, and we give it uh, data exploratory, uh, exploratory data analysis. Okay, save it. Okay, save it. So you can look at here, we have three headings. So when you're going to go up to the setup, you just click here. So you directly go up to the setup. When you're going to go down, you just choose the heading. So it's a very convenient way of going up and down. And then I deliberately put a lot of uh, space uh, between uh, goals, okay? so that we can easily read it. So this is for, you know, for you to, uh, for you to take it easy. Okay, so let's go back to our, you know, uh, layout. So this is called layout, okay? So we have three row and two column. Okay, so what is the function? Bar, and then you put bracket, and then M from, MF row, okay, MF row equal, then you put two value, row and column, okay? So there are three row and two column, okay? So when you do this, nothing happened, okay? Nothing should happen, <laughs> and no error should happen. Okay, right now, what you can do is you can just copy and paste everything, okay? You just copy for H and then put it there. And then you can just copy for test one and put it there. Okay, why don't we uh, make it bigger? And then you copy this and put it there. Okay, so I think everything is set and you run it everything, okay? Select everything and run. So we need a little bigger, <laughs> little bigger uh, margin. Okay, so I'm going to remove all this layout. Okay, so can you appreciate this one? Uh, it's a very neat technique, okay? Uh, okay. So you can see the comparison side by side of three different variables. 
So if you have a big screen, okay, if you have a, a 68 inches uh, plasma TV, and then you can, you know, look at uh, <laughs> a comparison of um, maybe I think 20 variable or 30 variable. Anyway. So, so does does it answer your questions, Sashi? Yes, yes, thank you very much. So, if you if you just want to make uh, two only two histograms side by side, you just okay. So we only have one row and two columns. So put one, two. But you can only put two histogram. If you put more than two histograms, then it will be, you know, uh, drawn as a separate graph, okay? Not in this uh, uh, graph, and not in this plot anymore. Okay, so any questions, any comments? Or anything you would like to test? <laughs> Okay, so I think this, uh, this is the end of today. Uh, histogram and uh, histogram, uh, you know, categorized by a categorical variable. And tomorrow we will go to um, bar plot, mosaic plot, and then scatter plot matrix. Okay, uh, not matrix, scatter plot. Okay, so remember, this is one way of doing this, okay? There are other ways of visualization, this numerical data. I think people, you know, create a lot of, uh, a lot of things, but um, I don't want to confuse you. So just remember this, and then if you have any questions, just get back to me, and I will uh, try my best to answer them, okay? So if no questions, then uh, good night. Uh, have a good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you.